G'day everybody and welcome back to the channel. I know in the last video I said I was going to explain the differences and the pros and cons on solid axle versus independent and why I went with a solid axle route. And I started the video but quickly realized that there's so much information and examples to show and talk about so that you understand my viewpoint on the whole topic that, that there would be enough information to make a 10 minute video by itself just on the topic. What I'm going to be doing in this video is just to change out my leaf springs on the suspension and also show you how I'm installing the shocks. You might see that I've done a few things on the trailer that I haven't really put on camera. Um, the only reason for that is I would get home some evenings and only have like 30 minutes or so to work on the trailer. And that's not really enough time to get out the lights and the cameras and stuff and record everything. But I will make, try my best to make sure that with the videos that are still coming yet you'll be able to see how I did each and every one. For instance, I've gone ahead and fitted all the, the latches. All the doors are, are completely sealable now. Those two latches are on. I've built that louver intake. I actually did video this one, so I'll just throw this into one of the videos where you can actually see it. And then I've been struggling a hell of a lot with the canvas work. Now, as you can see, my plan with the canvas was um, if this gets tension, then all of that goes straight. That's not a problem. My idea with the whole canvas work was to try and figure out and learn on this off camera, because I mean, it takes days and days and days to figure this stuff out if you've never done it. And then when I build the front end, um, I'd be able to show you guys how I did the sewing and how I did the base, because there's, there's quite a lot of stuff. Let me show you on the inside quickly. All right, so as you can see, I've done quite a bit of work on the trailer uh, it might not be on video but this took me a long while to try and figure out and sort out obviously it, it's bowing now and it's full of creases because nothing's tensioned but when I tension it it all straightens out nicely so that's going to be the side bed portion that folds out from the inside you can see the chains and poles and and everything closes and so the minute I've got the hang of this I'm now still gonna cut and do my windows and zips and the tension bars at the bottom and the flaps that goes around to, to tuck in on the, the steel door. And the minute I'm done with this and I know exactly how to do it, then I will film the whole front section. Let's get into today's video. So the stock plates that came with the suspension system that holds the leaf springs in place, um, I'll show you in a minute underneath the trailer. This is the bracket that I'm talking about. You can see from the factory they give you just, it's just a bend piece of flat bar basically it's very narrow at the top here and I know these work fine when you weld them up I mean they're on hundreds and thousands of trailers I just wanted to upgrade that to that I had this piece laser cut so all I need to do now is obviously this time my bending method won't work because that little bridge let me see if I can show you that little bridge there being six millimeter thick it's still way too strong to bend so i'm going to cut it on the back side through that material until i can bend this into shape and then weld it up so there we have that's what's going to hold the shackle for now so the back end bends up to strengthen the whole thing and to weld it up I'm locking the vernier at the bottom so that when I squeeze the top end, I know that that's parallel to each other. Now just to check that there is good. Wait for them to cool down. What do we have here? The day when I bought my accident suspension, um, I asked them for run about a 1.8 ton suspension load for, on the springs because I thought the trailer would be around about 1,600 kilos or so. Um, the lady said that these were two ton springs. So I installed them and I got them and I thought it's a bit of overkill, but it should work. I saw that there's hardly any suspension in these. So I phoned him today and spoke to a technical guy to get some drawings from him and specs on these 
parabolic springs and this set is actually made for two and a half ton suspension when i ordered a two and a half ton axle i think they assumed that it's going to carry two and a half tons and then they gave me suspension for two and a half tons so these are parabolic springs you can see they go from thick to thin and this is your normal packed leaf springs like what on your trucks and buckies and cars most things use this type this is a 900 kilogram spring instead of a 1250 so this will make a 1800 kilogram set if you put a straight edge over this spring the distance from here to our mount of the axle is like 120 mils on this pack because the pack is a lot thicker from there to there I've got a 40 millimeter difference so if I were just to straight swap the springs in I would lift the trailer by another 40 mils the body from the suspension so not necessary ground clearance because I mean you can't change ground clearance that's determined by your wheel and your in your tire and I don't really want to lift it with the whole 40 mils so what I'm going to do now is just redrill these these units because I mean obviously they were according to the old ones and as long as that can turn in there and there's more than enough space here so I can raise the bolt hole with a good 25 or so millimeters which will then lower me back down to almost where I was before the, the spring pack I'm not even going to cut this off I'll just use multiple holes if I ever need to raise the trailer then I can bolt it to the one lower I mean it's going to not going to cost me anything so I'm just going to drill two new holes here and then that should be fine for housing the new spring packs and then I'll have a lot more suspension because I know this thing is perfectly square and the holes line up perfectly, I'm just going to work from the existing hole to drill down. So basically all I did is I locked the vernier on a certain size. Always use an old vernier, don't go use a nice fancy one for this. And then I basically make a line across there. I don't know if you can see the lines. No, it doesn't look like it. But it's there, I can see it. And then for the one down, I just lock it for whatever size I want. Um, and then you make like a little line from the hole that way you get it exactly on all of them if you do it on each one you get the, the length exactly the same and then if you work from the front which is here perfectly flat surface it's just an easy way to to get those holes you don't want to go drill one a millimeter up or down because then the bolt won't slide through and I'm also going to just start by using like a two millimeter or three millimeter drill just to make sure I can locate it perfectly because big drills tends to run around you don't have it perfectly clamped in like a milling machine so I'm just gonna make a small indentation here and then from there I can drill the 12 and a half mil out okay and then it's off to the 12 and a half mil I'll just set the right speed Go see if my bolt fits. To see if it lines up. Perfect. Inside. Alright, so seeing as this is where I'm going to be mounting the shock, what I'm worried about is the contact area on where it sits here. So if you've got this and you're constantly vibrating and moving around, you might start making this hole bigger, a uh, little bit by little bit as, as it reams it. So by stacking a couple of sheets at the top, all I'm doing is making it thicker just on the shoulder area where, where the bolt will sit. Firstly, I'm going to weld this plate in. You can see I've had all the corners laser cut. I've made this a little bit longer just to give it some extra strength across the whole section and to be able to weld it at the bottom of the frame. So it's attached straight to the frame. Then this piece is going to go on top like that. In total on the back side I would have six millimeters of steel supporting the bolt and then this six millimeter plate 
will go on the other side. Now I'm just going to cut that hole through for the hole saw. The right way would have been to make some spaces on the milling machine or the lathe. But I'm lazy, so I'm just going to use some washers. watching soon i really think i'll have some extra time to work on a trailer i really want my garage back this thing is dragging out now with the whole covid story and getting sick this thing really needs to get out of the, the garage now so i can have my garage back i've got some other projects that i need to do if it all goes to plan there'll be some more videos coming out not five weeks apart from now on until hopefully we soon start painting this thing and then i'll show you how to paint it and do all the odds and ends and finish it off but yeah for now thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one cheers